Hallelujah, Father. We just thank you for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for your healing. We thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your touch. Father, touch your children right now. Father, love on your children like never before. Father, you're speaking to somebody's heart right now, Father, that all you want is a yes. They don't know how they're going to do it. They don't know where it's going to come from, but all you said is just give me your yes. Um, young lady with the black turtle neck. I don't know who you are, but he knows who you are. And he said that you've been, well, how can I put this? You've been in like some kind of a battle. Like you're, like you're, 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 you're wanting, you're wanting to leave but it's hard. Like, like you're, you're battling from where you know he's calling you from where you are right now. Like, you, like you're scared of the, when I let this thing go. That makes sense? And he's just saying, let it go. Because he can't give you what he has if you're holding on to what was. And the thing that I've learned is that I would rather pay for it right now in tears than with my life in years. So if you've got to pay in tears, pay in tears, pay in pain, pay in discomfort right now, because tomorrow is not promised, baby. And it's not a scare tactic, it's the realist in me that tomorrow I ain't promised. So you got it. You got it. You thought you could sneak in here. You can't. Can't hide from God, girl. Can't hide from the Lord. Um, this is my wife. Bless you, baby. 12 and under? 10 and under? 10 and under? Um, we gonna jump right in. Um, Let's go to, uh, oh man, John, what's the John, is it, Lord Jesus, no, it's the one, uh, I think it's uh, Matthew, when it's talking about, um, I hate this. There we go. You know what it is. Matthew 36 through 37, right? All right, that's, there it is. I know what, sometimes I just don't know where the, the where. <laughs> All right, let's go to Matthew chapter, what's the chapter? Chapter 22, 36, 37. I know because I didn't have it in my notes. The Lord just gave me this earlier. 22, 36, 37. And we're going to read it together in unison, okay? So one, two, three. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, you shall love the Lord God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Period. Period. So, Father, we just thank you right now that you're already here. Lord, I ask that you soften the hearts. Father, that you give us a mind to understand, a heart to receive, and a flesh to obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you bring up the, um, the amp slide? Y'all can be seated if you want to. No, the, uh, it says amp. There we go. My man. 
This is why AMP exists. It exists to help people to discover, grow, and mature in their identity in Christ. The Lord has been speaking to us for the past month and couple of weeks about something new is coming, about a construction, about a, about a, 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 re, a reformation, something new that he's going to release, something new that he's going to show. More to see in 2023 is the word that he spoke. But sometimes, I'll use myself as an example. Before I really started following Christ, I called myself a Christian. People would give me instruction or a prophecy or something or somebody would tell me something. And because the world has conditioned me for a microwave answer, because it did not immediately come, I brushed it off. Right? Because it did not immediately come or because I could see no way in how he can do it. I didn't prepare for it. Sometimes indifference in wor- is worse than disobedience. Indifference means that whatever. Disobedience means I'm not going to do it. Diso- indifference is you're not going to do it because I don't see it. You're not going to do it because I don't feel it. You're not going to do it because I don't see a way in how you can even make this happen. That is a very, very small fox in the vine that the Western church machine has been feeding everybody these microwavable uh, prophecy and promises and, and, and procedures and all of this stuff. So we've gotten to the point that when I turn my life and give my life totally to Christ and it does, something doesn't change within 24 hours, I'm, not, I'm the same that I was before. Mm-hmm. We're not told that there's a process to this thing. Yeah. Like, like there, there, is a, there, is a, there is a change. There's a change in the heavens before there's a change in the earth. Yeah, that's right. that's good. Because we, we have to go from thinking of thinking earthly to heavenly. Those two contradict themselves. But because we haven't been taught to, we haven't been taught to push through the contradiction, we stop when it gets hard. Because we have to start to renew and change our minds. Y'all, could y'all turn the YouTube off? I mean, like, close it out. It's closed. Did you just close it? Okay, because the sound went away. Um, My bad. It was just like, and I, Um, Yes. So the contradiction, right? But it happens, it it happens so, so subtly that we don't know it. So, I'm your pastor and I love you. I preface this by this. But God, God is becoming disheartened at the response of a spoken word because A, you don't see it, B, you don't believe it, or C, you don't even care. There's one luxury that we take that we think that we have. It's called time. We don't have it. The Bible says life is but a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. So so this popcorn, bubble gum, Jesus loves everything and everybody. It is so. But the Bible says that he is long suffering, but not forever suffering. So that means there's a time. When it's up. And you know me. I'm not going to say it unless I got Bible. So you like to hear? Here you go. (laughs) James 4.13 through 17. 
It says, come now, you who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make profit. Yet you do not know what your life will be tomorrow. For you are just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Listen here. So for one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, for him, it is sin. Once you know what to do and you do not respond in that manner, it is sin. Listen here, it doesn't have to be an, it doesn't say if you do an evil act. It can say if he says turn left and you turn right or go straight, it's sin. <laughs> If he says, pray for this person and you don't do it, it's sin. If he says, give me time, read your word, fast from this, don't do, and you don't do it, it is sin. But what happens is, hear me, we haven't been taught that. So the sin starts to accumulate in our being then it starts getting bigger. Now, Satan has said this thing in our ear. Now we're to a point where it's condemnation and guilt when all we had to do was repent, turn and go. But it accumulates because nobody has taught us that this is sin. It's the small foxes that spoil the vine, y'all. It ain't the big things. It's the small disobediences that turn into these big things. And then before you know it, somebody fart wrong and you're ready to fight. <laughs> My mouth was open. Hey. <laughs> but this is a real thing because we drift so far sometimes that once we get to a place, it's too far. So we wonder, how in the world did I get here? And before you know what you're doing and you're saying and you believe in things that you have no idea from where they came from. But it's been the small disobediences that's been accumulating. So now it's heavily weighted on you like this big old backpack. And you think the enemy tells you that it's yours to carry. He tells you it's your personality. He tells you that's just the way you are. He tells you, well, it runs in your family. That is not true. That is not who you belong to. That is not your character, your culture, or your bloodline. Once you become a follower and a believer in Jesus, you have a new bloodline. Can, can I tell you, I'm going to tell you this for all our quote unquote woke folk. Your bloodline goes before your ancestors. Yes. Our bloodline traces back to Abraham because we're engrafted now. Yes. So big mama, great grandmama, great great grandmama, big daddy. Yeah, they had wisdom. And things, right, that they've been planting in us that we can learn from, but they are not God. They can't give you a whisper from the beyond from your ancestors and they tell you what to do. They, they, some people are so woke that they sleep. I ain't going to go there. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. The thing, but, the, but this is the thing that the world has us so tricked is we got time, y'all. We don't. Yeah. Whatever you do not prepare for, hear me. We are living in a preparation age right now. Not preparation age. Preparation age. Okay? We are living in a prophecy. Jesus said, I'm coming back. We are here because we, we live a life as unto Christ because we believe that he's coming back. But my question to you is how many of you are truly preparing? 
How many of you are truly preparing living every day as if he was to return? We get so lulled to sleep in doing church and, and you know, I'm, I have to do this for the Lord and I have to, I have to read my Bible. And it, bro, you can read the Bible all you, you can know it backwards, frontwards, Hebrew, Greek, Latin, whatever other language is translated in. But if you don't have him in your heart and you don't have love, you have nothing. That's why we have a whole bunch of quote unquote Christians who are walking this earth filled with Bible knowledge, but have no tenderness of heart and compassion for God's people. We have leaders who are so prideful within themselves. You there's no way you can know God and be prideful. There's no way that you can be in his presence and not realize that you don't even deserve to be there. To humble yourself, as humble yourself before God because you know you have not earned a thing. It is just by his grace and mercy that he allows you. It gives you access to his presence. But how many of you are truly, truly preparing for his arrival? How many of you are really, really, truly preparing? Or are you just wasting time? This... <laughs> This verse to me, what I'm about to read, is like top two of the most scared. The first one is, you know, you've been cast out demons and all the stuff in my name and get away from I don't know you. But this is number two on my list. This is the scariest, one of the scariest top two verses. I think it's probably one A and one B for me. Hebrews 10, 26. Hebrews 10, 26, and we're going to read through. 31. Hear this. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, period. Listen, you keep doing. You keep going away. You keep living the life that you want to live. You keep saying, I got time to repent. I got time to do this. I got time to do that. I can do this tomorrow. There no longer remains. I'm, I'm going to put this in e ESV, Eric Standard Version. Jesus no longer covers you. Yeah. His blood no longer covers you because the sacrifice is his blood for your sin. You have no covering for your sins. 27, but a terrifying expect, no, keep it up there. Go back. But a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire, which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has ignored the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. I'm going to stop right here. People's like, oh, the Lord God, he, he, he did that in the Old Testament. This is Hebrew, y'all. This is New Testament teaching. 29. How much more severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted to the spirit of grace. Basically, he's saying if you do and you keep on, it's like you slapping Jesus in the face and saying he died for nothing. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine. 
says the Lord, right? I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Who, Jesus. This one. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Go back one to 30. I want y'all to see this one. It says the Lord will judge his people. He's talking to Christians. This ain't to non-believers. <laughs> the Bible is written to believers, y'all. So they had the same issue back then. This is not a new church. This is not a, a Western church thing. This is not a Western church model. This is something that's been around for, for thousands of years. They acted the same way. <laughs> I bet you never heard this in the church. I know I didn't. I was told you, you just inject Jesus into everything you do and he'll do something magical. <laughs> Unicorns and rainbows and fairy dust. Your life will magically be changed. No! Maturation is intentional. That's right. It's intentional. Preparation is intentional. I'm getting ready for something that's going to happen. I have to get it ready. I have to get ready. I can't sit and say, y'all know Jesus is coming back. Mm hmm. Look at them people over there sinning. They don't know he coming back. And you just as raggedy as they are. And guess what? You're judged at a higher standard because you know what you ought to do and you not do it. So guess who will get more mercy in the end? Do ones who have no knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. They can turn and say, Father, I did not know. Forgive me. I want to come to you. They're there. Yeah. But then one of us can get there and he say, get away from me. I know you're not. Yeah. But Lord, I prophesied. Lord, I preached. Lord, I cast it out. That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I thank you for your service. But I know you not. That is terrifying. To think that you've been in the hands of the Lord. But you've been in his hand, but for the wrong reason. Oh, that, that, that makes me shiver. Here's another one that is another scary verse. Matthew 25, 13. I mean, is this 11? 1 through 13. It says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take extra oil with them. But the prudent ones took oil and flesh with their lamps. The prudent one said, hey, I'm a prepare. Because I know something is about to happen, so I'm going to bring extra. It, it's my quote. I say this all the time. I'd rather have more and not need it than to need it and not have it. Because sometimes your overflow might be just enough. And you thought it would have been too much. I'm not going to go into that one either. Now, while the groom was delayed. Uh oh. He didn't come in the time. I thought he was going to come. I, I was preparing for one day. And he didn't show up. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get angry. 
Lord, you made me work for this oil. You made me go find a lamp. Now I'm sitting here looking like crazy with a hand, a lamp right here in the oil, and you ain't even here. Why, 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 right? And he's like, I wanted to see if you would prepare. Yeah. I wanted to see if you would believe what I said. I said I was coming, but when I come, it's in my time, not yours. But in my time, you should be preparing because my word does not return to me void. So what I say is going to happen. But the question is, is are you going to be ready? Are you willing to look foolish in front of the wise? Are you willing to be persecuted for my name? Are you willing to be in discomfort awaiting my arrival? Are you willing to step outside of your comfort zone so you can prepare for my arrival? Are you willing to die to yourself? Are you willing to cry? Are you ready? Are you willing to bear the weight? Are you ready? Listen to this one. Are you ready to give up your dreams for my will? Are you willing to detach yourself from familiarity and step into the unknown waiting for my arrival? Or will you be foolish and say, because I, not, I did not arrive in your time, therefore I'm not coming. Jesus, that was a good one. Thank you. Yay. All right. <laughs> now, while the groom was delaying, they all became drowsy and began to sleep. But at midnight, there finally was a shout. Behold, the groom come out and meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish virgins who said to the prudent ones, hey, can you please give us some of your oil because our lamps are out? They're trying to they're trying to start the process, but not from the beginning. They're trying to reset the time. They're trying to go back and say, oh, man, we messed up. Don't you know, hear me out, remember, I love you to death. That's why I'm saying this. Don't you know that if you don't prepare or if you don't use the gift that God give you, he will snatch it and give it to somebody else? Somebody else who's been preparing? Somebody else who's been eagerly awake? Somebody else is the worst. Somebody who is beholding. Beholding is different. Beholding is waiting with an expectation and preparing for something to come. It's not just a, oh, it's awesome. Behold this, oh, this thing, I know it's coming. Let me prepare because when it comes, I want to get it. The foolish virgin said to them, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. However, the prudent ones answered, No. There most certainly would not be enough for us and you too. <laughs> Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourself. Whoo! I can't give you mine. I work too hard for this anointing. <laughs> uh-uh. I I've been through trial. I've been through tribulation. I've been through no... I've assassinated my character, my heart, my mind, my family. I've divorced every single thing that does not belong to God. And you want me to give it to you because you didn't prepare? No. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. 
And guess what? This is, God didn't require them to. He, he didn't say, give them your oil. No, he said, they didn't do what they knew they ought to do. I'll do them. But sometimes what happens is that, you know, we, we're like, well, you know, the Lord will do such and such. The Lord will do. Do you know what he would do? Do, do you? The Lord would want me to, the Lord would want me. Yeah. But not in this instance. Not when it's him. Not when it's him. If you see Jesus coming on exit 137, <laughs> his temple is set up on exit 137, and you see somebody who's broken down and in need, pass them. Because I guarantee you, the Lord spoke to them and said, you better change your oil now. You better, you better rotate your tires. You, you better get some new tires. You better get a new alternator. You, you might need to flush your engine. But, beca but because of the cost. Because of the cost. They did not respond. Because it costs too much. Here the Lord is saying, hey, don't give them your all. Don't, don't, don't give them your all. But while they were on their way to buy oil, the groom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut. Once he closed something, it's done. I do not know you. Oh, you wanted to say that. I don't know. I, I dropped down. But while the Lord, we were on their way to buy the oil, the groom came and those were ready, went in with him, the wedding feast and the door was shut. Yet later, the other virgins also came saying, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he answered, truly, this is how compassionate he is. Truly, I say to you, my child. I do not know you. And he follows it with a warning. Be on the alert. Be on the alert then, because you do not know the day nor the hour. Don't be the foolish virgin, y'all. Because you don't want to pay the cost for the oil. The oil costs. The light costs. But what happens is that sometimes the oil costs so much that we allow our light to go down. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, right? We're supposed to be shining like a city on a hill. That's what the Bible says. But it's at a cost. It's at a cost. It's at a cost of preparation. Preparation, y'all. We don't know when he's coming. We don't. We don't know the hour. The Bible says that Jesus don't even know the hour. He said only the Father knows. He said only the Father knows the day and the time. He doesn't even... God's just going to be like, hey, time to go, bro. Hey. He's going to be like, dude, I'm making pancakes. Right? Like, <laughs> let me finish my dinner. Like, he doesn't even know, y'all. This thing is serious. This, this Christian walk is not this, you know... I. I I do what I want to do and I say what I want to say and I'm righteous and I'm ratchet and, you know, try Jesus and not me. That's not the gospel. The gospel is every day I'm I'm being fashioned and formed into the image of the son. 
That's the gospel. Every day, I'm being fashioned and I'm being formed into the image of Jesus. The only time Jesus fussed somebody out and was flipping tables and hitting them with whips and stuff, Jesus was gangster, was when they were disrespecting the Father, not him. Hear me. It's not for us to be go telling people off, y'all. Uh-oh. I love you, remember. It's not for us to be giving people a piece of our mind. <laughs> it's not for us to be letting people know and putting people in a place. It's about looking like Jesus. Say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Believe me, everybody who sows will reap. But it's not for us to dictate what they're sowing. We are to show them what Christ looks like. But everybody's been telling them, give you them a piece of your mind. Girl, don't you know who you are? It disheartens me at all of these pastors who like, listen here, I'm going to tell you one thing, sister. That the people who mistreated you back in 1987 is going to look at you today and they're going to wish that they never have a, and they had a coulda, woulda, shoulda, and it, what? I don't care about 1987. I don't care about people who misused me because guess what? They didn't misuse me. They misused God. They misused the blessing. So if I live on responding to the way that people treated me, uh-oh, if I live by the way, if I, if I would bring myself to the level of emotion, I would ruin my life. If I would bring myself to the level of the way people treated me and worried about, I don't care. <laughs> it might shake me a little in the beginning. Hey, we, emotion is awesome. Hear me. Motion is good, right? Like you need to feel things because you need to know something wrong. Pain means something wrong. <laughs> but if that pain causes you to move outside of the will of God. Yeah. It's become your God. And what's happening is the church is telling you to live by your emotion. Yeah. Live by your emotion. Make sure you do, let your motivation be getting back at your haters. <laughs> what? My motivation is not people looking at me right now who treated me in a... I don't care. The only motivation I have is to become more like Christ. If they see Christ, that's 100% great. If they see success, that's 100% great. If they see failure, that's 100% great. I don't care. The only thing I care about is say, hey, what he used to do or be, he ain't that no more. That's the only thing I want them to say. Is that this dude on fire right now. Let's not navigate this world and prepare by how we feel. Because you're going to feel a lot of things, people. Yeah. The enemy's going to whisper a whole lot of things that are not true. He's going to play off of those emotions like a jungle gym. We need to have a sign on our jungle, on jungle gym that says, for Jesus' purpose only. And, and to guard it, the Bible says to guard your heart. We need to guard it. So when the enemy comes to try to play, hey, this ain't made for you. Get out of here. No, this TV show ain't made for my heart because I, I still got things I need to do. So get out of here. 
these songs I can't listen to no more because they bring up these, these memories and these feelings. Get out of here. These clothes that I love to wear, that I used to love to wear, they project me as something that I am no longer, so I'm no longer going to wear those pieces anymore. The stuff that I used to smoke and drink, even though I have the taste for it, it does not belong to me anymore because these monkey bars are made for only things in Christ. That's what we need to get a sign. They said these monkey bars are made for Christ. Monkey bars for Christ, right? <laughs> so the question is, is, okay, well, how do we prepare, right? How do we prepare? How do we prepare for Jesus? Let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I've been trying to figure out, I'm, in my time with the Lord, I'm like, all right, Lord, like you saying something is coming, new construction, hey, get ready, prepare. And I'm like, Lord, okay, like what is this thing? Like what is the new? Like what is, what are you, what are you so enthusiastic about for releasing and it was a simple response. Me. It's not a what. It's a who. Now, it's quiet, but I can guarantee you, if I would have said, the Lord said he's releasing funds. He's releasing finances. He's bringing new houses and new cars and new careers and new every all these physical things. I wouldn't have been able to contain y'all in this place. <laughs> but I like the silence because that means you're doing inventory. You're, you're, you're doing the check. He's saying, I'm getting ready to do this thing. I'm getting ready to an outpour of me that will only and that can only be received by the people who prepared. That's why I didn't call a huge fast like 99.9% .9 of the churches do in America. He don't want just 21 days. He don't want just 15 days. He don't want just nine. He just don't want, he just don't want you to stop eating meat. Yeah. He wants all. Yeah. Yeah. All. He wants you on your job. He wants you while you washing dishes. He wants you while you're washing clothes. He wants you while you're driving. He wants you while you're playing basketball. He wants you while you're working out. He wants y'all while y'all in class. He wants y'all while y'all hanging out with y'all friends. He wants y'all in the sneaker store. He wants y'all in the clothing store. He wants y'all at Target, gas station, motor vehicles, DMV. He wants all. This one foot in and one foot out stink, it's not going to be around for long, y'all. Because he's going to do this shifting, and y'all going to be like, let me go get some more. <laughs> Come back. Hey, Lord, it's me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the fire marshal said that we can only have 100 people. <laughs> and uh, uh, you make 101. Sorry. Bro, this thing is real. We joke, but this is real, man. I don't want to be outside that door. I don't want to be left with what's out here because it's going to eat you alive. This walk is real. Jesus is real. His blood is real. God is real. I don't care what other people say. And if you don't act accordingly, you will be, as the movie, left behind. It's not about being perfect. 
Hear me. It's not about being perfect. It's not about a works. It's about a becoming. You're going to get tired of hearing this word. It's about becoming something, not doing something. It's not about, oh, oh Lord, I'm in, this, I'm in this grocery store. I gotta be like Jesus. 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 No, it's you walk in that grocery store and say, man, he with me already. Yeah. What kind of milk I need? Lord, Holy Spirit, bring back to my memory what kind of milk we do. <laughs> and you walk in with your groceries and you gotta be somewhere at 730 and it's 722. And the Lord say, hey, I need you to stop and I need you to pay for this purple groceries real quick. I'm like, all right, Lord, whatever you want me to do. Sorry, don't mean no disrespect. Ah, tickle. Gotcha. <laughs> That's what it's about. Yes. An apple tree don't have to string to make apples. A seed was planted, cultivated, irrigated, and it becomes. Bro, the seed was planted and his name was Jesus. Yes. The trials and tribulations are the irrigation, it's the water, it's the soil, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the elements that bring you into who he's called you to be. But guess what? The soil is this, it's your heart. Some of it's been hard. He's been trying to plant something, but it's so hard because everybody's beat you up and the world has treated you a certain way and the enemy reminds you of what you used to do and blah, 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 blah. But I'm going to tell you right now, you give your heart to Jesus, he will turn it into a heart of flesh. Some of y'all saying, I'm scared over my heart. People will misuse me. And they misused him. To the point of death. Ooh, I just felt this in my... What if the misuse of you was for you to figure out how you're supposed to be used? <laughs> Bars. What if the misuse of you was used to show you what you truly are here to be used for? <laughs> what if the misuse was used to get you to start preparing. That's rain. Mm, won't he do it? I'm in the, I'm feeling real barish today, right? <laughs> I'm gonna end on this bar that the Lord gave me yesterday at night. Because I want us to be a people who fight through obstacles. I want us to be a people who break through the mundane, who go for the more. More to see in 2023 means if it's more to see, that means you have to prepare a little bit, a little bit more vigorous. You have to be a little bit more determined. You're going to have to fight through a little bit more than you used to. But I want you to be encouraged that if he will give you the power to do it, you are not going to do it in your own. You can't do it on your own. I said this yesterday. The biggest lie of the enemy is that people say, well, you know, you know, sister, that the Lord ain't going to give you no more than you can handle. You know that's a lie. If he gave you what you can handle, why would I need him, Mr. Bernard? Yeah. Why would I need him if I can do it on my own? He's going to say, hey, take these boulders, slop a cow. <laughs> He's going to put them on your back 
And yeah, you're going to get crushed. And then you're going to say, I'm tired of me. Lord, help. I can't do it on my own. Lord, help. Lord, I'm going to die. You, Lord, I'm going to snatch myself out of here because I can't carry the weight of what you're telling me. I want to tell you that's a lie. I'm going to end on this bar. Obstacles are not an inconvenience. They are to strengthen you where you are the most weak at. I ain't going to do that. I got to pay for this one. <laughs> These mics is expensive, brother. They ain't cheap. Look at obstacles as opportunity. Thank you, Father. I take it. Look at obstacles as opportunity. He, he said bars. <laughs> look, at, look at obstacles as an opportunity, man. This is an opportunity for me to strengthen whatever was weakened in me. He is giving me an opportunity to strengthen this thing. Make me strong, Lord. Some of us are going to be real buff in the spirit. And some of us are going to be real noodle arms because we're not preparing because we don't want to pay the cost to prepare. Father, I thank you right now that you are giving people a heart to prepare for you. Father, some of them are asking, how do I prepare? Number one, is you cultivate a prayer life that you have never had before. Two, you get in the word of God and ask the Holy Spirit, the author, for revelation of what you're reading and understanding so that you can turn them, those words into obedience. Turn those words into action. And three, let go of what was so he can give you what is. So, Father, I thank you that you are doing a miraculous work. And, Lord, and I'm asking you to have mercy on the ones who will not respond. Who want to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, because they think they have time. But, Father, by your Holy Spirit, remind them in any way that you see fit that tomorrow is not promised. That their knowledge won't save them. That their job won't save them. That their children won't save them. That their spouse won't save them. That their finances won't save them. That their clothes won't save them. That their coolness won't save them. That their grades won't save them. That their friends won't save them. It's only by the blood of Jesus that we're saved. Father, help us to focus on the things that matter. not the things that burn in the fire so that you can get the glory out of every single ounce of our being so that people will know that you are real, that you are love, but you don't play, that your word is your word and there are no shortcuts, there are no compromises, and that there is a process. Lord, continue us to shape us into the image of your son so that we can reveal who you truly are, your true nature, to this dying, dark world. No matter the age, Father, from 8 to 80, help us to look more like you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Hey, welcome to Amp Church's YouTube page. I hope you find these messages on here inspiring, edifying, and encouraging. And also, too, if you uh, like and enjoy what you hear, please don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And remember, here at Amp Church, you are wanted, you are needed, and you are loved.